Hey there, it's Daniel from Voice Flow. In this video, we're going to talk about the key to building quickly, which is reusability. Voice Flow is designed for teams and is designed to build complex AI agents at scale. And a key part of that is being able to define which part of your flows are reusable and what you want to be able to leverage at different parts of your product so you're not be building them over and over again. So there's two core features that help with this. The first one is called components. And the second one is the template library. So components are a way to be able to define a key set of steps and then reuse them in your flow in a way that you can update and it'll update everywhere that it is. So for example, here I've got a check order status flow and we are checking the order status in Shopify or a database. And if we can't find it, well, we wanna be able to let the user submit a support ticket so we can look into it further. So in this case, we said, oh no, we can't find information for this order ID, let's try contacting support. I do wanna submit a ticket. If the user says yes, then we have a whole flow here to submit a ticket to Zendesk. Now, I also wanna be able to reuse this in my question answer. So let's say a user asks a question, I can't find an answer, I wanna give them the option to submit a ticket. Now, I don't wanna to have to rebuild this again, and what happens if I have to go and update this function or I need to update the flow? I don't wanna keep updating it everywhere I've copy pasted this. So that's where you're gonna go ahead and build a component. So if you're familiar with development, this is like kind of like defining a function where you build it once, you reference it in your project, and you can go and update it if you need to. So what you do is you highlight the blocks, and if you go on the top here, you can hit create component. We're gonna call this submit ticket to Zendesk, and we're gonna hit create component. And so you can see here that it appears on my component list on the bottom left, and all those steps have now been collapsed down into a folder. So if I zoom out a bit, I can go ahead and just organize this a bit more here. We'll call this submit ticket. And if I click this little pencil icon, I can go into the compote folder and see what it looks like. So you can see that it automatically hooked everything up. So it enters from here and it just goes down this path. And then when it's done, what it does is it just goes back to where it left off. So if I hit return to instance here, it'll take me back to where I was. And now we can loop around and say maybe what else can I help you with? So now once this component uh, is exited or the conversation ends anywhere in here, it's just gonna go back uh, to whatever's next. So in this case, it'll take the user to what else can I help with? Now, if I wanna reuse this, let's say in question override here, what I can do is I can actually just drag this out. And now it acts like a step on my canvas. So I can hook this up and I'm pretty much done. And so what I'll do maybe when this one ends here is we're gonna go and just send it back to the start intent. So go to block, home, and welcome. And so that's how you use components in voice flow. Now what's great is if I go in here and I update it once, so let's say, let's send a ticket to our support team and get you help immediately. That's gonna actually update everywhere where this component is. You just have to manage it once and then whenever you update it, it updates everywhere. If you hit back and you go to the components CMS, so you can see here in the CMS, the components tab, What's great is it actually lets you see where your component is used. So if you have a component that's in a lot of different flows or you have a very, very large assistant, you can go to the CMS tab and you can see which workflow your component is in. And if you click to it, it'll take you exactly where that component is. So really helpful if you're about to update a component and you wanna make sure that you know exactly where it's actually being referenced or if you really need to dramatically change the component and you wanna make sure that none of your flows are gonna be broken as a result. Now, the second feature we wanna talk about is library. Now the template library is really useful and you can think about it like a clipboard for your project. So you don't wanna actually create a whole centrally managed function. Maybe this is something that you just wanna copy paste a lot in your project. So a great example are combinations of steps. So you can see here in my library, I've got a couple ones, right? So save information. And if I drag that out, it actually just drops a bunch of steps on the canvas and it is a pattern. So what's your name, capture name, check name, and then actually go to one of these patterns here. Or I can do something like API call example, and it drops out in an example of an API call. So this is really useful if you started implementing design patterns or you find that there are common patterns in your uh, agent that you're building. So let's say, for example, I might have a text step, tell me your information. I have a capture step, and then I have a, another text step. And this might be a pattern that I use a lot in my project because I'm capturing a lot of information, but I don't want to have to keep adding blocks over and over. So let me just give this a title. And now what I can do is I just shift highlight. And the same way before you go to the top, you hit add to library. And this is now going to allow you to assign a block color and we'll call it uh, capture template. 
So now if I go to my library, you can see that I've got the capture template here. And if I drag that out, it drops it right in the canvas in the green steps of all the titles that I've got here. So really useful if you've got those design patterns, or for example, you may have AI steps with a ton of prompts and prompt settings and custom instructions. And rather than having to rewrite those every time, you can actually just save the block itself. So I'll just go ahead and save this to the library and we'll call it you know, classifier or something like that. And that way you don't have to keep copying and pasting. You've just got it in your library that you can reference and go and drag out. So super useful and both of these will help you speed up your project. Now, a couple other key features that are really useful when you're working with a team are workflow statuses. So when you click on a workflow, and let's say you're working with team members, you'll see that you've got a little icon here. So unassigned and status. So I can now go ahead and assign this to anyone in my workspace, and they'll actually get an email that a workflow has been assigned to them. So let's just go ahead and assign it to myself. And I can hit the status as to do or in progress. This is gonna be really useful when I'm collaborating with team members to let them know who this is assigned to and when it was updated and if it's actually done or if it's still in progress. Now that pattern of seeing who updated it last is pretty consistent throughout the CMS. So if I go to my intense one here, I can see who the last editor was and when it was updated, as well as my components tab, my variables tab, functions, etc. So workflows has the added feature of indicating status just to help you and your team collaborate on what's actually being built. Of course, you've also got commenting uh, right at the bottom here, as well as sticky notes. So this allows you to go ahead and tag anyone uh, on a project that you're working on. So those are some of the core aspects around reusability and being able to kind of work on that with your team. But if you have any questions, feel free to hop in the Discord and ask the community. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video and happy building. Thank you.